My name is Marlon Maidment. Uh, I'm a designer and I'm here today to talk about my brand Hosian. We're, uh, we're here in my studio. I've been drawing ever since I was a kid. Ever since I knew what a pen and a paper was, I was getting up early in the mornings, going down to the kitchen and just drawing before anyone else woke up. Eventually it kind of just evolved into multiple things and now it's clothes. Both my parents work in fashion, so fashion has always been something I'm really, really interested in. I've always had a lot of attention to detail with my own personal style. A couple of years after I moved to America, where I really was like, I want to have my own brand and I didn't want to spend a ton of money on expensive clothing and I realized that I could make it myself. So well, I started printing first. Uh, I started doing and printing onto blanks that I owned. And then I also started collecting garments from my high school at the time and editing those and putting down funny graphics. And being that I was going to high school in Buffalo, overall is not a super creative like city. I found myself looking for things to do, projects to work on. And I kind of came to the conclusion that I needed to do it myself. Two years after that, doing that consistently, I realized how tedious it was, hand cutting out of paper. And then eventually I was just like, mom, I need a sewing machine. From there on, it was pretty much my dream to make enough clothes where I could wear only my own clothing. I think it was fun for me because it was one of those mediums that I had it was completely untouched and I was able to project a very raw, uninfluenced creativity onto the clothing. I guess the first piece of clothing I ever sold, I had the Instagram account up. He was one of my good friend's uncles and he had found it through that and then he looked through the page and he was like, this shirt, I need this shirt. And that felt really good. You know, I'd never had someone really be like, I want this for myself, like I see myself in this. And then that, that really sparked a thing for me where I want to create work that people can feel at home in and by however much time they wear it, eventually it's going to look a lot more like them and be a lot more affected by their lifestyle than it ever was my design. The biggest thing I think with SEIC is the connections that I've made. The people that I've met. Oi! Sorry. Shut up! <laughs> yeah, these idiots. Um, no, they're, they're, they're the best. They're my big fans. Being able to go do events, vendor events, wear the clothing at events. When I came to Chicago, I wasn't even really sure what I wanted to do. I, I applied as a graphic design major and everyone immediately said to me, it was like, the clothes that you make is the most exciting thing that you're doing by far. I never really thought that like my own personal process of just making clothes myself, I could eventually make it into something more substantial. I'm seeing a bit of success, which feels really good and encouraging, and I'm just gonna keep trying going. But I also do a lot of trading for things. There's just so many artists here, and I'm I'm very into getting tattoos. So I'll make pieces for people um, in exchange for work. I got my entire back piece done for a trade with I Write On Money. He's a really great tattoo artist based in Chicago. I did a like a fully distressed, flat patterned pair, upcycled black mixed with like gray denim. He loved them and they look really great on him. From there, it's kind of just exploded. Everyone wants to do trades. So my favorite piece uh, is a pair of jeans that I made. Yeah, they're up on the Instagram with the campaign I did for them with all the photographs. It's very close to my heart because my brother and I did it together. Yeah, they also were just the most time I ever spent on a piece. It, it works because anytime anyone wants any piece, they always send me those. And it's like, I want these ones, I want these ones. I'm like, I want those ones. So at the moment I have a website where I have all of the garments listed. I usually have the commissions open where people can DM me and ask for a specific piece. That ends up being a little bit more expensive just because it's so specific. Immediately what comes to mind is my dad. Definitely he's a big inspiration for me. He went to art college and has been a designer his whole life. The work that I do is in a similar avenue and I've always valued his opinion. I look to the 90s for a lot of references, but overall mod culture, and it kind of consists of this idea of wanting to dress smart and kind of elevating a person. I'm definitely kind of just inspired by the person that I apprenticed for in Buffalo, um, Alex Zorievsky. Go check his stuff out. It's really good stuff. I just find him to be a big inspiration of like work ethic. He's constantly working. He's taught me a ton of stuff about how to work in this internet of uh, clothing industry that goes on with all these people making their own work and trying to get it out there. Try and stay conscious of what I'm into, especially with the internet at the moment. It's very, it can be very difficult to find something original. Through social media platforms, there's a lot of circulation of the same images and you end up, you end up not being able to see things that are outside of this circle of people. If you're not able to go to other sources and really gain a more external perspective, I think it can become very regurgitative. 
I think that the interaction that we have on the internet is now making the world smaller. And with that comes sometimes less individuality. It's just changing, no matter what, it's gonna keep changing. Trends are now moving through different scenes of people rather than what's popular this year or what's popular last season. It's, it's almost easier as a designer to be able to be like, where is my market? People know what they like, know what era they resonate with, and they kind of stick with that. But it's definitely very otherworldly because you, if we shot a film in the world right now, you'd have no idea what time of the past 100 years it was. Something I've always struggled with is like figuring out a way to market it in a way that is uh, different and original, yet still works and is digestible. Sometimes it has to feel somewhat familiar in order for it to be digestible. A lot of the promotional work I make is a lot of the time very obscure. I try and incorporate the work that I'm doing personally into my schoolwork because being at art school, your own personal practice and what you're into is and is going to end up being the most impressive piece that you have. I'll be making the pants on my free time anyway. I enjoy it so much. I just I get to kind of sit in this very meditative space. I, I, I call it like a, a coma that I almost go into where all of a sudden time doesn't exist and I come out of it and I've got a finished pair of pants and that for me is just the most incredible feeling in the world. So at the moment I just really want to start doing like big vending events. I'm lucky enough to be able to be selling at ThriftCon in Atlanta uh, and if that goes well hopefully I'll be going around the world selling there as much as I can. Long term I really want to start to change my stuff into a more manufactured base, be able to scale the brand and then be able to kind of turn it into a passive income and then that way I can pursue my own personal career which is costume design. I, I really want to be a costume designer. Um, Hosean, it's a term that I found in like this Socrates philosophy book and it just means of God, to be of God. And that's what I wanted for the brand, to be of God. Music. Music.